Wireless Wings, only at Zaxby's. Redeem rewards, scan to pay, and order ahead on the Zaxby's app. Come see how quality senior living at East Ridge Residence is better than living at home. Spacious apartments, chef-prepared meals, medical care from outside health partners, and fun activities. It's so much better than living alone. East Ridge Residence, the best deal in town. We are all looking forward to the spring weather finally getting here. The groundhog saw his shadow, but nonetheless, spring will be here eventually. We do have some cold days, though, to weather through, pardon the pun. We find Tish Gale Mard out in the elements on this cold day, uh, but she's soaking up the beauty at the Chattanooga Nature Center. Good to see you. Good morning. I am so glad that you have one of your birds with you, because before we begin talking too much about what you had in mind, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. You know Jed Mescon. We both oh, yes. know him quite well. I just hung up the phone with him, and he said, Julie, ask Tish. There's word going around on signal to be careful about throwing out too much bird seed because with the rainy weather, it gets rancid. Is that right? Well, it can, but here's what's going on, and it's happening on Lookout Mountain as well and even in parts of the downtown area. Um, salmonella is going through the bird population right now, particularly with pine siskins. And so what everyone really needs to do is if you see a sick songbird in your area, take your feeders down. Take your feeders down and then just broadcast your bird seed on the ground. Um, a friend of mine who's a local songbird rehabilitator took in over 50 pond siskins in January and only three of them survived. <gasps> oh, so no. This is something that happens every now and then. Um, it's not atypical, but it's something that we all need to be careful about. Take your feeders down, bleach them, clean them really well, keep them down for a little while, and then put them back up. Um, but keep your feeders clean, and that'll help. But you have to think about when songbirds congregate in one area, if one of them's got salmonella, they're probably going to spread it to all the others since they're in that congregated feeding area. Right. So if you broadcast the seed, it'll help some. Okay, so, I mean, I know you say if you notice the songbird that's sick, take the feeder down, but is it a good idea, Tish, just to go ahead and take them down anyway? Yeah, where people have seen these birds sick, Signal Mountain, Lookout Mountain, and down uh, on the south side, I know, yeah, go ahead and take your feeders down for a little while and then just broadcast your seed on the ground and see if we can get this salmonella out of here. Okay, now for the gorgeous, was that a hawk that you're holding? This is a, a red-shouldered hawk. This is ember. So would it possibly work through the chain that the hawk could eat one of those songbirds and then the salmonella would progress? Possibly, yes. That's called trophic cascade and yep, Sometimes that happens, and that's another reason we've got to be really careful about what we do on lower levels because it climbs that food chain. So I know you talked, you and I, just in private conversation about you have to be careful using your human heart too much to interfere in nature. Nature has its own way of surviving, yet that's mm -hmm. your very role at the Nature Center is to rehabilitate animals like the hawk you're holding. So what is his story? Right. So Ember was actually hit by a car. Uh, very common for raptors to be hit by cars, and she only has a partial wing on one side, so she's non-flighted. So this is a permanent injury. She will always be in care with us, and she's an animal ambassador for her species. She's absolutely beautiful. Is she one of the animals, if you come to the Nature Center and walk the grounds, can you see her, or are the ambassador animals away from public view? <laughs> The, the animal ambassador area is still closed to the public. We um, have that area closed, but now Ember goes for walks, and I take other birds for walks too, as well as Taylor. So you might get lucky and see one of us out walking with one of these animals. And eventually our small programs are gonna come back. Once COVID numbers continue to drop and we get in a safe zone, we're gonna do these small group tours again and you'll be able to get this close to her. Okay, what do you mean you take her for a walk? Is that why your arm muscles are so good and strong? <laughs> yeah, I've got her on a glove right now, and so we actually walk the property. Um, I I'm known to do a 5K with a bird on my arm, so <laughs> we just go out for a walk and get them out in the sunshine, and we have a couple birds that um, live in our clinic and we weather them during the day, but with these cold temperatures, we can't weather some of our small birds. 
and so we actually take them for a walk out in the sunshine. Now, Amber lives outside, so she gets sunshine all the time. You know, Tish, I know that people are very impressed with the animals that you have there, but the more you and I talk, the more impressed I become with the staff that is there. What y'all know is extensive. It, it's, it, yeah, our staff is pretty incredible. Um, we're, we try to be experts in our field and the knowledge among all of our staff is really deep and really unique. We all have these little niches and it, it's fun to be around everybody. You kind of learn stuff just from talking to our staff. You take it in by osmosis. So anytime you're out walking on the property and see our staff, ask us questions you know that's why we're here we're a community organization and we want people to learn more about what we do and why it's important she's oh i just got a big look at what you're feeding her <laughs> she's having some mouse bites this morning i could see that one okay so talk to me too about the kids and camps is it too early to cross our fingers no. and hope no perfect timing um we're doing something new this year and we're super excited about it we are pairing with the aquarium for all of our camps. Oh. So it's gonna be a super cool summer. Every camp that we do will be in conjunction with the aquarium. So um, probably mid to end of this month, you're gonna be able to register with camps and you can do it on our website and then that'll link you over to the aquarium website. Um, there's gonna be a really great variety of programming and then of course our staff and aquarium staff. So super cool. We're very excited about this, this um, joint adventure for camps. That is a really good idea. Okay, let me ask you this one too and I'm throwing you a curveball big time here. But so many businesses, Channel 3 included, you know, we're working on a skeleton crew. People yep. are still working from home. You can miss seeing your coworkers, it's been now almost a year. Is the Nature Center in a position yet to allow businesses to have like retreats there and that kind of thing since you're outdoors? Unfortunately, not yet. We are not, we are just not quite there yet. Okay. We're hoping to be there soon and thank goodness COVID numbers are looking better in our area, but we don't, we don't want to be a hot spot for a, um, a, a passing along COVID. Sure. So we're being really careful about everything. So we're just not quite there yet, but we will be. As soon as we can, we're gonna start doing all that stuff again. Yeah, people will love that. It's amazing to think that there are faces that you just haven't seen I know in it. almost a year. I know, but something everybody needs to remember though is our property is open. Our buildings are closed, but our property is open. So come out and walk, bike, hike, bring your dog, go for a walk, get outside. Mm -hmm. Get outside and soak up that vitamin D and just chill out on our property and really enjoy yourself. Well, I know you are legitimately chilling out this morning. It is very, very cold. <laughs> it's but the, pretty cold. But if you're bundled, the winter does bring a different view, right? You get to see things you can't otherwise. Yeah, I, I love to tell people that you know, with the leaves off the trees, you can see all kinds of nests in the trees that you normally can't see. And wildlife is more readily available because they don't have quite as much cover. So you never know what you're gonna see out here. It could be me walking by with a bird, could be a bobcat, could be a deer. The other day I was on Lower Creek Road and I saw coyote tracks, deer tracks, and bobcat tracks. Oh, wow. So, really cool but none of the animals just the tracks i did no i was out at the wrong time of day to see everybody well that was fortuitous i think for you maybe <laughs> well ember is trying so hard to take off she's been a very good girl tish thank you for your time this morning go go thank inside you. where it's warm appreciate it thanks so much you're always so welcome you can always learn more by going to the chattanooga nature's website which is reflectionwriting.org that is their official name we always just refer to them as the nature center located on garden road at the foot of lookout mountain 821 1160 grab your friend uh, grab a co-worker who you're still able to sit next to at the office and go take a walk on their beautiful grounds thank you tish thanks julie <laughs>